Hey everyone, it's Daniel here from the world of Apple with a review of ScreenFlow by Telestream. ScreenFlow is an application that lets you record your Mac screen while you perform actions on it. In 2008, it won the Apple Design Award for Best Mac OS X Application. To test out ScreenFlow, I decided to use it to record my latest tutorial, iTunes Basics. Stay tuned to find out how much of a difference ScreenFlow made in the production of my video. When you open ScreenFlow, a small window pops up with options for your screen recording. As you can see, it lets you choose the monitor that you want to record from if you have two, record video and audio from a selected source, and it even lets you record the computer's audio. Recording the computer audio is an excellent option because the quality of sound that the computer makes is preserved rather than being played and then recorded by your microphone. You can click the red button to begin recording. In my testing, I found that ScreenFlow's recording worked very well and excelled in areas like high definition video where the competition does not. ScreenFlow is very useful for recording videos of your presentations and marketing your products like iPhone and Mac applications. You can export them to YouTube and other websites, but I'll get to exporting later. The editing interface of ScreenFlow is very intuitive and simple, but this does not hinder its many advanced features. When you launch the editor after recording your screen, the first thing that you will notice is how large the canvas is. On the right of this canvas is a sidebar with properties, and below it is the timeline. There are several panes in the sidebar. The first is video properties, which lets you customize how your video appears. Next is audio properties, which is followed by screen recording properties, which lets you customize any recordings by adding click effects and other really useful properties. Callout actions let you highlight certain parts of the screen. Titles let you add custom text to the project, and media is just like the iLife Media Browser. Say for example that I want to start with a full screen view of this video that was recorded with ScreenFlow, and then show it side by side with the same video that was recorded with QuickTime, complete with titles and advanced video properties. Here's how I'd do it in ScreenFlow. First of all, I'd go to the Media Browser and drag the ScreenFlow file into the timeline. Now, I'm going to import the video that was recorded with QuickTime by clicking Insert, Choose. This will be imported to the timeline, but we'll want it on a different layer so that we can see them side by side. I'll drag it to the second layer and align it so that they both play at the same time. Now's the fun part. I'll move the playhead to the spot where I want the first clip to become smaller and then I'll go to the video properties and click add video action. I'll now make it smaller so that the two fit on the display, add some rotation and add a reflection. As you can see the second clip is now occupying the video so I'll do the same to it and I'll move them both to different sides. Looks cool so far but now let's make it a bit more professional. I'll go to the title properties and click add text box. Now I'll add my content, put it on the same rotation as the video clip and do the same process for the other one. Let's preview it and we're done. Another example is if I am making a quick information video about applying transitions in Apple's Keynote. I first prepare the windows that I will need for my clip in this instance Keynote and now I'll open ScreenFlow and choose what options I want for my recording. When I click the red button I start performing what I want on screen. To change the transition of a slide in Keynote Simply navigate to the slide pane of the inspector and choose the transition. Now I click the stop button in the toolbar or shift command 2 and I am brought back to the ScreenFlow editor. From here I can go into the screen recording properties pane and choose if I want to add a click effect on the pointer, add a different pointer and even show the keys that I have pressed. In the callout action pane I can add a callout to highlight a part of the screen, 
either around the pointer or in the active window. Once I choose either of those, I can enlarge it, add a border, blur the background, and many other options. Now that you've finished creating your project, it's time to export it. In the file menu, you can choose to export the file to YouTube, Flash, or any other file. Under export, you can save the project as a file using ScreenFlow's handy predefined choices and customize advanced settings like filters and compression. Motion Blur makes on-screen animations flow smoother and more liquid-like. Now I'd like to list the pros and cons of ScreenFlow. For the pros, I really liked how beneath the surface there are many advanced features like callouts, cursor options, 3-axis rotation, reflections, transitions, and many, many others. In addition, the performance was excellent even when recording graphic-intensive media, and the option to record computer audio also contributed to making the end product the best possible quality. I love the attention to detail seen throughout the application. For example, the cliffs all show waveforms, and there is a snapping feature in the timeline, and even drag-and-drop import. There were very few negative aspects of the application, but I think that the application could have been made better if it supported recording two displays at the same time. And also, this is more of a personal preference, but it would be nice to see an option for a built-in project library manager similar to iMovie. These are really minor and very specific, so they really are insignificant to the overall ability of the application. At the moment, this application costs $99 and is available at www.telestream.net slash screenflow, and a link for that will be in the description. All in all, using ScreenFlow for my iTunes video not only made it look great, but making the video was much, much easier than any other way I have ever tried. I highly recommend this excellent application for anyone interested in making professional screencasts easy and effectively. Thank you for watching another video by the World of Apple.